Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Saturday, January the 6th, 2024. The market actually between the S&P and actually the markets, right? I'm going to have to include them all between the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Russell are beginning to get into conflict with one another, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is it just appears that the, that the Russell may be done with its primary B wave setting the stage for a much stronger primary C wave decline, while the Dow and maybe the S&P are not done with their primary B waves which sets the stage for an additional rally up to new all-time highs. The NASDAQ also sits right on the fence between did it complete? Is it now heading lower in a primary C wave? Or is it going to hang on by a thread to a fourth wave correction, leaving open the potential for that final fifth wave up, and again in the NASDAQ, to new all-time highs above 17,165 basis, the futures market. So let's start. I'm going to start with the SPX, the cash uh, market for the S&P 500. And still, I'm leaving it open whether the SPX or the S&P 500 has completed intermediate wave C to put in the top of primary wave B. So, so far, what we have done, here's the large picture, cycle wave three completing at the 2022 highs. Uh, here again <clears throat> in the S&P, it was that first day, that first trading day of 2022 that the market started to decline, reached the high and began to decline. And so what we've counted out thus far, and I remain satisfied with, is that we finished primary wave A, and it was an ABC structure. And we're looking at primary wave B, which also is an ABC structure of an immediate degree, where we end up still within that primary C wave, which will be a five wave rally, an advance of minor degree. So, here we have that. Now, where I've marked out is since we are in the largest degree, we remain in a cycle fourth degree corrective move. A corrective move on the cycle degree for cycle wave four will consist of an ABC of primary degree. Where are we? In the primary B wave. So we still have a primary C wave decline staring us in the face. Now, here's the big difference. I am not going to be tossing out, oh, the market's going to nosedive, the market's going to collapse, because I'm not necessarily looking for that. I'm going to continue to reference this as a correction, as a part of an ongoing larger cycle degree, ABC, a cycle degree fourth wave down. So what comes after this? A cycle fifth wave up. So we're still looking for a stronger move higher once cycle wave four is complete. So let's dive into now looking at the inside of what is going on. So bringing it down to a daily picture, and here again, there's the completion point for primary wave A. Here we have A, B, C, intermediate wave A. And I did change that. I'm honestly going to tell you, I did change it because it ceased to function as an A, B, C up and X wave. And then this continuing to just be an additional A, B, C of intermediate degree. So it just puts in a little bit different pattern than the NASDAQ. With the Russell, on the other hand, for its 
primary A wave completed uh, an elongated, the, the A wave came in, the B wave, the intermediate B wave, I had to shift down because I thought it was a primary B wave triangle pattern, ended up not, had to shift it down one degree so that intermediate wave B in the Russell turned into a triangle, leaving the C wave down, which did count as five, to being the completion point. And that would have put it in October. So in October of 2023 in the Russell, it completed the primary a wave. And what the whole rally phase in the Russell then off of the October 2023. Uh, actually, let me just go over so I'm not speaking off the top of my head here. Let's just take a peek. It actually would have been, yep, October of 2023. So the Russell put in a B wave, get out of the way, kick your butt rally from October up until <clears throat> the end of the year. So in two months, I put in what I'm considering a B wave. Now, back over in the SPX, not quite that hurried and not quite the same pattern. But we, I am moving into where from that October 2023 low, end of October, what we're really putting in and looking to complete is an intermediate C wave to finish the primary B wave. So what got extended out is intermediate wave A into its own ABC. And then I put an intermediate B wave coming down and that it, it fit to an ABC. And now we're doing five waves up to put in the C wave. Now, Bring it down again. Let's take a look at the four-hour chart. <clears throat> what are we doing here? Well, wave C will consist of five waves of minor degree. There's wave one, wave two, wave three, very extended. But that's the one that completed on the 28th of December. And from that level, pretty much, we have been heading lower. Now, this is where the count truly becomes more difficult. Because if I'm just looking at a four hour chart from here, doesn't it kind of appear like to be a one, two, one, two, three, four, five of three, maybe a four, and we still have a five down to complete the first five down? That's a very strong possibility, which would then shift this count. But I attempted to do that. I would have to bring the three down to here, the four over to here on a minute degree, which is like pretty, pretty bizarre. Move the minor third over to here, minor four here, minor five, five, and then the B wave here, as I have done in the NASDAQ. It does not count as cleanly, but it may end up being the case. So what I'm really looking for is that in this, what I'm still would be considering a minor fourth wave, you can see we've only reached 0.236 retracement. And that's of that third wave of this rally phase. Only 0.236. Whereas in the NASDAQ and other markets, it has exceeded 0.382 and crossed over what would have been wave one of that finishing rally. Now, granted that both of those markets, more, more the NASDAQ than, than the Russell or the Dow, have the ability where we could move and adjust again the internal counts for wave one and three. We can do the same thing here. But this is coming up in a minor degree, not a minute degree. So it adds a little bit of a challenge in how and what adjustments I can make. So, and it hasn't come down and broken any, any downside, which would disqualify the minor fourth wave. So all of it stays active and alive. But 
what may have been shifted to preferred status in the NASDAQ remains the alternate in the S&P. Now, I know that's going to become very confusing, but I don't really see much choice in how to count, and I will be sure to get over and take a look at the NASDAQ. Focusing again here on the S&P, the cash market still appears like it could use one more slight low, either that or Friday's low. Now, because mind you, in the futures market, the the market kind of this the rally that took place took place prior to the cash opening. And then so a lot of what we saw here, a lot of that this particular rally in the future started an hour in the previous hour. So within this, within the futures market, which I'll show you, and I'll just go over to it so we can see what I'm talking about. In this particular case, that four happened prior to the opening or as if for on the opening. So in other words, in the S&P, they don't show the bulk of this. And so it's the next bar in the S&P, the closing, the, 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 the second four hour bar shows that the market went to a new low where in the futures market, that new low happened early. It happened here at, at, in the middle of the night. So we can put wave three down Wave four up, still needing a slight new low to put in a C wave at a minor four. That, my friends, is in the S and that's the future. Back here in the cash market, hmm, see a little bit different. That low didn't come in here, so it's hard to kind of say, well, what do we got? One, two, three, four five or just one two three or do we still need a new low was that enough am i putting the three here we still get a four and a five so it's yet to be determined is this three and that's four and we're coming down in the five in the cash market and the futures market will acknowledge that either tomorrow during globex or monday during uh, regular hours plus again Markets only really reached and touched just on, well, actually it started Wednesday and well, Thursday and then Friday actually breaking it slightly, the 0.236 support area. So we have to leave open that, hey, the S&P could continue to drop. Now, being that it's a minor fourth wave, there's minor wave one. Way down here, 43.93. That's pretty far away from current levels. That's what would have to happen in order to break the rule that wave four cannot overlap wave one. So that doesn't even come into the picture. Even if I kept it on and just, you know, coming down and breaking minute wave one, it's still pretty far down there from where we are. So we've not even kind of come into a 3A2, which is the normal that I'd look for in a fourth wave. Now you begin to build it can, how, how this could become difficult. Now, let's add into this. This is just a fundamental, but this is all going to start happening next week. Starting next Friday, the banks begin to report their fourth quarter year earnings. And so it starts on Friday, really begins to kick in at the beginning of the, the next week the 14th, the 15th, and then we're off into earnings. And then we still have the larger corporations. We still have a lot of things to be reported. How is it going to be interpreted? Is it going to be interpreted as like, well, that was then, this is now. Are we going to get forward guidance? It's not going to be consistent with, oh, you know, hey, we're looking for some strength. We're looking for all this just to continue, to continue to roll out, and that the market just continues to rally. Or is it going to be just a momentary uh, reaction 
we pop, we get up, we make a new high above what we've seen thus far, and then that's it, and then kaboom. And then we start down. These are all possibilities. So the market's yet to be determined. So we leave open all those possibilities. I leave open the possibility that like the Russell and the NASDAQ, there's a possibility that the S&P has also completed that uh, primary C, uh, B wave up at these highs. And here in the cash market, that high is 47.93. Now, did it break the all-time high at 48.18? No, it did not. And that's what we kind of would be looking for to do. So there's another point in favor of the market putting in one last rally and getting itself above 48.18. We have numbers of that up about the mid 4800s, 4850 to 70. We have numbers just above 4900 as well. So again, once the, if the market's going to make clear its intent, then we'll begin to add fibs the most important being for the fourth wave and that would actually start to come in um i'll tell you what this one is this this level oh this is this level not sure what this guy is doing what's the 1.618 it's right there so I need to take that, and then we have 2.618, must be way up there. Yeah, there it is. So I did leave up markers for, actually it's for the third wave, but so I need to take that one off. Excuse me, for I left that there and then didn't take it off, and I need to. If we're going to be putting on additional upside, it's gonna come in the form of a minor fifth wave, and then I'd be connecting wave minor one over to the low of minor wave four. So even if we're just taking our current low, we can we can just do a guesstimate type deal because we don't have confirmation. And I'll put that there. And then we're going to run it all the way over to there. You can see 618 is 4859, 100% equality, 4969. So it's right there. It does fit. But then it can't, that's going off the low that we saw on Friday afternoon. But that holds and we begin to rally. So I'm not going to leave it there because I can't say that that's the low. But you can see if it does and we get the rally and we turn it into a minor fifth wave up and the potential is for new highs. All right, so moving averages. Go back out to the daily because those those tend to be more important. And what you can see, we're still in up mode. We have the 20 still rising, actually. It's the eight that started to crest and come lower. And that took one, two, three, four, five down days to get it to do that. So the daily, in terms of moving averages, is still more favorable to the upside versus the downside. We did break below the 20 on Thursday and closed below, broke above briefly on Friday, closed back below it on Friday, which tends to just lean a little bit more negative. But if we get above it quickly in, in Globex and we start to rally again, it will revert it back out again. So on a moving average basis on the daily chart, it's not all that serious to the downside yet. So that leaves open potential where we're going to put in a rally to finish it. All right, over in the futures market, a little bit different. Same deal, though, in terms of there is primary wave A. Here is A, B. We're looking for that C wave still in motion. And here are our where wave C will equal wave A, 5187. So... 618, I believe, falls down in there somewhere. It's been exceeded, which is probably why I took it off. Let's just double check. Yep, it's 4801. That's why I took it off. So in terms of a fifth wave, 
Granted, it just needs to get above 48.4150, which is the current high in the futures market, basis that March contract. So we need to get above there to put a third wave in. Our daily chart, no, not looking that bad. We still have minor one, minor two, minor three. We're coming off in an ABC. Let's drop it down to the, at least the four hour chart and we'll take a peek inside to see what this all looks like. So we have one, two, three, and then we have A, B, C, wave A, wave B, one, two, three, four, still needing an additional leg down. So you can see here in the futures market, we did break 0.236 and appeared like we were going to head down towards that 3A2, got stopped right at that four hour, 200 simple moving average. Hit it on the nose, rallied strongly right off of it. I mean, strongly right off of it. Why? Well, I'm sure that every algorithm on the ground and every then every trader on the ground started screaming, oversold, oversold, we got to buy it. And they did. So, but did not hold. And it came down, rallied a little bit because it was a Friday expiration. And still needs likely another low before we would complete, if I'm still looking at it that way, a minor fourth wave to set up a rally. Now, again, I'm already presented, so I still think, and I'm going to tell you, it does not look that severe. So the, so the S&P still carries a fair, fair shot. I mean, if I had to put it on a probability scale, the, the worst I could do is 50-50. The best I can do is like, you know, 65-40 or 60-40 or 65-35. 65% chance that we will rally back above 48, back above 48-41 and finish this primary B wave. So, you know, we're, this is the four-hour chart. We're coming off of, we've got pretty, pretty, pretty oversold. It could come back down and test that again before it does. Put that fifth in and then start to rally. But once it does, it's what I normally would say. The expectation would be it starts to rally and does not look bad. And so a pullback that strong is what went, no, nah, it's not ready yet. If it kind of comes back, puts in a, like maybe a, you know, comes back maybe 38% of the bar, et cetera, et cetera, then you're looking like, okay, now it's healthy break above the 20, break above the 100, break above the 50, start heading up, get that eight and the 20 turned and heading up. That eight just never stopped declining. Even when it ran up, still was declining. So there's a little bit of work to do, but I think that what we can do is come down, put in a new low, as maybe even, you know, there's the support, 46.76, right into there, 75 level. We have additional support and via the 200, that if we just get down put in a slight new low should still provide some support but doesn't mean we can't go down and break it and then rally again so s p still has a, i'm going to say 65 35 65 percent probability that's going to bottom and rally and make new all-time highs again and that would be both for the cash market and the futures market over in the NASDAQ, it has been the problem child. I had to tell you, it, it has been wild. And primarily, there's a couple of things going on. Now, you see, I've taken it all off in terms of all the fibs that included additional upside. So let's come back out here to the, to the weekly chart, where you can see still, I'm still considering the highs that we reached in this case in 2021, in November of 2021, when we reached that high, but actually it's right there. 16,000 would have been on the 22nd of November in 2021. We reached a high at 16,767.50. That's in the futures market. Let me just, I jumped the gun because what I want to do is I want to go and I want to look at the NDX. So the high in the NDX was right there on the 22nd, 29th, excuse me, nope, 22nd of November 2021. And that high was 16,765, I'm going to call it. 
Okay, so on this basis, that high, the market has created and moved to a new all-time high. Now, what that releases is I it it yep I'd still have to consider it because it's about two hundred points. I'd still have to consider it in a regular B wave because it created a new all-time high, but that doesn't fit the second part where then I'd be looking for a whole lot more because what we seriously would be looking for here is for somewhere up above 17,000 and almost up to 19,000 for the 1.236 and 1.382. And I'll tell you what, I'll just throw them up there so we get an idea of what we'd be talking about here. So I'm going to bring it down to here. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to edit, but I'm going to take all of this out because I don't need to see it. I'll leave that 100% and then put the upper two. So you can see we're up here, 18,257, 19,180. That is, would be the extent if we were in a full-blown irregular B wave, but we're seeing seemingly and in the finishing stages. Now, having said that, on my weekly, I'm going to leave those there for right now, but on my weekly, I still, I'm putting this where it is completed. There's the A, the B, one, two, three, four, five, the C wave. Now, the NASDAQ has tended to just really rally more intense, excuse me, intensely than the S&P. And the only other market that really, I would say, that rallied more intensely than the NASDAQ would be the Dow but that's 30 stocks versus 100. And so that, you know, and within the Dow, there was a kind of lot of bigger players and they just all kind of just really ran higher and continue basically to do so. Now, ah, back here in the cash market, let's come down off that weekly. So, oh wait, let me finish. We are in a cycle degree fourth wave of which we've done primary wave a simply primary wave b and now we're beginning a primary c wave down now being that this is basically flat right there's the high it didn't really exceed it by all that much you'd be looking for a c wave to come back down here but there you can see it's the hundred percent where wave C would be equal to wave A at 1060, 10,644, so I said 45, with the previous low at 10,440. So it would be one big flat. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's a crash. No, no, actually, crash would just bring it all the way down, bring it all the way back down to there. That's the intensity of what a crash could do from these levels. So I just think it's correct. Now, it's going to be intense. There's going to be a lot of pretty heavy-duty down days. There's going to be a lot of damage done to the high flyers. But then consider how much was done on the way up. How much was what you might want to call fluff or air or just, you know, overbought or, you know, pushing harder than it should. I had to get in, markets within, whatever you want to talk about. There are a lot of reasons why, and they just moved in and they did it anyway. AI will continue, in my view, to dominate, but we're going to need to correct. But I think it could still dominate within. And so we may not get that full blown. If AI continues to support the NASDAQ, as we've already seen, it could be a weaker primary C wave than what we might expect. This is all yet to be seen. So, but I can't hang my hat on that. I can't hang my hat on it. Well, I'm looking for a flat. Meanwhile, we, we slip into World War III and things really look bad in the United States. Something really drastically happens here inside our own country that just kind of blows everything up. What happens then? Well, yeah, we probably would have a crash. So to, to hang your hat on something that just 
hangs in the balance and doesn't really fit. We're not stable right now, folks. The global picture is not stable. Geopolitically, we're not stable. Politically in the United States, we're not stable. Believe it or not, as a, as a U.S. government, we are once again confronting the possibility of a government shutdown. Yet again, we have the government and the House of Representatives in the Senate unable to, particularly the House of Representatives, unable to function, unable to govern because of whatever is going on. And again, I'm not going to become political, but I'm saying it will and does eventually roll right over anything else that we're trying to deal with because we're not getting the governance that we need from our elected officials. And that goes across the board, folks. Again, I'm not intending to be political here. So I have no statement to make. But I am saying... What can it do to our market? It could rack it up and just knock it to, for a loop. Because what can happen if something really starts to affect the banking sector, if something really starts to affect the ability for the Fed to operate as it should or could, that the Treasury Department ceases to get funds because the government has decided we're shutting down and you, we won't give it any other way. But, well, because of whatever that situation might do, it is going to have an effect on the market. AI or not, it's going to have an effect on the market. Now, right now, I'm looking for just, yes, a, a, a fairly sizable correction. But that could get totally out of hand. Depends on what are the contributing factors. Right now, if I'm looking and we are starting on a B wave, in the cash market, that B wave should come in somewhere around here. Excuse me, the C wave should come in somewhere around here. Mm. A full out blowout, yeah, could drop it all the way down, but I'm not looking for that. I'm giving a lot of credit to the fact that, that we managed to get through all of this political BS, all of this economic BS that can be contributed back to the inefficiencies of what we're dealing with. So, you know, but let's flip the coin. Is there a possibility that the B wave isn't done? Yep, there really is. Now, I'm going to bring this down to the daily chart, and we're going to look inside, right? If we're still counting this intermediate C wave and then in turn the primary B wave, we have intermediate wave of minor wave one, two, three, and four were in minor wave five. That's been the case since October of 2023. We've been inside a minor fifth wave up. Let's take let's take a look at what this does on the inside. I'm going to slip down to the four hour chart and then open that up. And the cash market. I've had to make a little bit of a change because mind you, I had that minute wave one up here. Minute wave one, minute wave two, minute wave three. But you see what happened? It didn't do it in the cash, but it did it in the futures market. Okay. I had labeled minute wave one. So I reassigned and put minute wave one down here. Now, even if I still do that, I can revert this back out and say, here's wave three. One, two, three, minute, minu excuse me, minuet, minuet four, minuet five, minute wave three can end up right there. And this is A, B, still maybe needing one more little loaf to put in a C wave. It doesn't count out as cleanly as an ABC, I will say. But... It might just be the ticket. And again, what's going against that? Well, to start the new year, and again, not that we look at the components, but it's the components that make the index. Apple, the heaviest weighted stock in the NASDAQ, heaviest, I think it is the heaviest weighted stock in the S&P. It's not just one, but two downgrades. Two downgrades. 
one, Barclays was bold enough to put a $160 price tag target on it. And Apple started to drop. Now, yep, it did manage to put in a decent little bit of a rally on Friday, but by the end of the day, it was back below 181. Mind you, this all started from 199.62 to be exact, is how high Apple got. So, and that was just prior to the New Year's. Got to 199.62. So basically, in two weeks, the stock has dropped to 180. And if 160 is the price target, what's it going to look like another 20 bucks? What's going to go with it? We're going to start to see them go after Amazon. We're going to start to see them go after Google. We're going to start to see them to really start to pull in NVIDIA. NVIDIA, everybody's little dream AI stock. Suddenly picks up its volatility again, which is great. But then again, it was an expiration. So, again, you know, it's just these pictures, they're there. Here I am on my four-hour chart. I'm very oversold. I'm very oversold. I'd be looking for a pop. Even if I need another, you know, this fourth wave isn't done and I'm going to get a rally up, I can get it up off of there, bring it back down, and then rally. Yeah. Then I'm back on with the, I'm going to have to reverse this because the cash market definitely leaves the room that this is here. But I had to, you know, I have to stand in agreement between the cash and the futures market. I can't have one doing one thing and something else indicating something totally different. One will catch up with the other. And that goes both directions, right? The future will catch up with the cash. The cash will catch up with the future. So right now I'm leaving it here. Again, I have to give at least a 50-50 probability that the NASDAQ will turn, pick up the rally, fulfill the dream of making additional new highs, and in the cash market, getting it above 16,969. So getting above, seven, breaking 17,000 in the cash market to complete primary wave B. So I know this, this you might consider it the alternate, but it really has a 50-50 shot at being what's at play. Now, over in the NASDAQ futures market, if I pull it out again, yeah, it's going to show you the same deal. A, B, and here we got to 17,165. This high was 16,768. I rounded it up. 50 cents. 68. 16,768. We got 17,165. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So a regular B wave and all. Now, let's bring it down here and let's take a look. Let's go right down to the four hour. I mean, I can pull it down to the daily. You're going to look at it and it's going to be the same kind of a deal. But here again, here's wave one, right? On the daily, it really doesn't fit to start pulling this minute wave one down here. See where that is? See where this is? It broke. I'm going to pull it down to the four-hour chart. I'm going to open this up. What's this low? 34. What's this low? A high, 380. 380. So it not, but almost 50 points it broke below wave one. I don't have that much room to bring this down. It just doesn't count well. It's just not complete. I mean, even if I did it here and said one, two, it's like this puts this like minuet, one, two, Minuet three, four, minuet five for three, you know, for minute three, but or just that it brings the three. I could put the three back here, or it does fit as just as I'm counting it. 
if I wanted to really put this push it to where I'm going to give that room for this market to rally again, we get down to 16,334. That's over 300. No. I mean, you can take a look. You can see. Now we got 17,165. I'm going to leave the change on the table there. And it's and we're looking at 16,334. Market dropped 830 points. 830 points granted for a wave four. That's pretty big. It's pretty big. And if I just had to run it off of this level, then it's just really. I'm going to add the fibs. We're down at one six at six one eight. Boy, four. No, too big. I'm going to remove it. Let's call it and say we bring this all the way down to here. And I'm running it from here. Let me just get rid of this guy to begin with. I'm going to run it from here. So you can see what we can. I'm wrong way. Let me do that again. And this running to here. Here. Well, where are we? Yeah, we right did. You can see we still have got almost down to 50%. So it becomes a little bit more acceptable. A little bit more acceptable as far as we're wave four. But I'd have to move it down. I'd have to move wave one down to here. And this is an irregular two, uh, which can be. And then I get one, two, three, four, five, minute three up here. So that it can work. This has just becomes difficult. It becomes difficult. Because if we have continued now, right, if we still need another leg down, we could rally in a two, right? So let's, this is where, it, this is just how it becomes a difficult picture. Even if I'm saying, okay, that's this case. Now let's just take a look. And put just our fibs in, what's it going to look like if we just do a normal wave two? We can go back to 16,847. That would be a pretty strong rally for coming down to 334. We're looking for a 500 point rally. Maybe it gets to 786. We know that a second wave can almost get as high as the first wave, but just cannot exceed the starting point of wave one. That's the rule. Well, What's to say that we can't rally back here while the S&P and the Dow go to new all-time highs? Could it? Sure. Sure it can. So you see the, the conundrum we're going to call it. How about that? There are possibilities. So, and I granted, I know, I know what a lot of people are saying. Oh, you're being wishy-washy. Oh, you, know, you got to stick to your conviction. It's like, Really? What conviction are you holding on to? And on what basis? Your position? You're still holding on to a long? Or did you get out and now you're short? And now you're looking for downside? Yeah, I get I get the difficulty in just trading straight long or straight short. So what is the market really telling us? That that's the problem. There are other ways that you can trade and put on a position, effectively protecting yourself in both directions. So, you know, but I get what people are telling me. But I'm not being wishy-washy, as some of you think, or indecisive, as some of you are, are commenting. I still believe that either direction, we're completing or have completed a primary B wave, which I have been tracking since October of 2022. I'm not changing my mind. I was looking for upside and can continue to say, well, I still believe, okay, we have a possibility where we could go up there. I'm not changing my mind. Since October of 2023, 22, I have disclosed and talked about what levels a primary B wave could get to, including new all-time highs. 
So please bear with me while we're at that completion point. And, and yeah, save it, save it. Now I'm giving you both sides. If I have to add fundamentals, if I have to add geopolitical, I have to add the different things into this, it ain't pretty. That's all I can tell you. But he, the possibilities are exactly what I've just laid out. So, and I'm going to leave it right there. Because the only thing that's going to tell us is the market itself. And my suggestion is you trade with the market. Going against the market can be deadly. And I know it's hard, folks. I really do. Even swing trading right now. If you just look at the swing trade for a couple of days, well, yeah, I'm into the downside. It worked. But it, when we get into real confusion, we're just like, oh, we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. You know, day trading can be really, really tricky. So everything can be really tricky. And we have so many things in force working at all times. So I've laid out the upside. I've laid down the downside. And the only thing I can really add to this is that if we are done, what can, I'm going to go back out to that weekly, what can we look for? Well, there's the low of wave A here again. Pretty flat, if you ask me, a little bit high. We, we did go to new all-time highs, but still flat. So what are we looking at? I would say the no greater than to come down and equal the low that we had in October of 2022, which is 10,484.85 right in there. Then it's a complete flat. But if we're just looking at because we went up and we did create a new all-time high, well, then we might be looking at, you know, where the market is actually going to do. And we didn't get close to the 1.382. So I can't say that we're going to drop and, and the FIB would be 1.618. You know, that we'd be looking at, you know, the market to drop down. And I think it's going to be greater than that. Hold on. Let me, let me go back and adjust that number. Uh, Yep, we got to get it into 17,165. I just happen to know that number. 17,165. 165. I'll leave the change. We'll leave that on the table. So 1.618. It's too far. I'm not looking for that. Mm -hmm. Even 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That could work. 10,887. Is it breaking that low? No. No, it's leaving a lot on the table, but it's pretty flat. It's bringing it into flat. Now, you want to call it a crash? Do it. Do it. Do what you think you need to do. But I'm calling it a corrective phase. Ultimately, yeah, we're going to get as close as we can to that low. That's the October low. This is all based on the March contract. Now, as we start to go out and contracts roll, and I'm not talking we're going to get there this year. We could, but no, this is going to take time. And there's going to be a lot of up and down all along. So immediate needs are to discuss and to look at possibilities. If this is not the completion point, where could it go? Then we are again looking at 17,050, 17,500. We have levels to go. And what I can do again, coming back out and take this off. And I go into this one. Oops, come on. Thank you. And here, that's 2.618. And then I'm just going to have to tell you, what I'm going to have to do, I got to take all, oops, this off, because they don't apply, and these do. And then, honestly, this one, you're looking at 17,467 and 4.236, where C-Wave is 18,613. Now, in, in the current environment, if this is what you think, well, those are the possibilities. But 17,165, yeah, that's where I'd look for this 
minute fifth wave should break that level. And again, I'm going to bring it all the way back down. So what you're first going to have to do is to run it one, and then over to this four, which has already been broken, which is not going to work. So how are you going to do it? I just, right now, I don't know. So this is where I'm going to leave it all. Yes, it's confusing. Yes, it's not easy. But I'm giving you the count that would accord, go accordingly to how this all built itself up. We have broken wave one. That's violating a rule. Wave four should not overlap wave one. If it does, it's not a fourth wave. And that's why I put the fifth wave up there and the completion point for the A wave and the primary B wave. For right now, we could rally, folks. We've coming off of this is my four-hour chart. Very oversold. We got ourselves back above. See how it holds. And the next update actually will be on Monday, January the 8th. Be Elliott Wave update.